So the first thing that I want to show you is, is kind of how the, the technology works under the hood. So here you can see in this image, um, there, are, there are a bunch of sort of green and blue and yellow and red dots in the world. Um, and those are, are sort of the visual features in the world that we're tracking. So we keep track of where those move in the video feed. And from that, we can actually see the motion of the device on the screen. So you can see I can rotate left and right. I can tilt up and down. Uh, but the other thing that this allows us to do is to actually track the motion of the device as I move through the world. And you can see that uh, the device is, is sort of tracking. Um, and if I come back to, to sort of roughly where I started, uh, you can see the device knows this. So, so this kind of spatial awareness, I guess, is, is a little bit different than what you've traditionally been able to do on phones. Traditionally, you just get sort of the rotation of the device. Um, and this enables some interesting applications. So uh, one kind of fun application that, that sort of showcases uh, how you might use this device is, is this cube stacker. So here, uh, this was inspired by uh, another sort of cube building application. Uh, but you can see that I can actually sort of place cubes in the world um, based on where I'm standing. And, and sort of pretty quickly, uh, using this reticle in the center of the screen, I can, I can build like a little sort of foundation. Um, and then maybe I want to, uh, oops, move that, build a house. So I can select, say, a wood sort of base. And I can build this up as I walk around. And this is just a very intuitive way of, of doing this kind of modeling we find. So I sort of put some blocks in place, make a couple windows, and then I can kind of build the roof of this house as well. So I'm just kind of navigating the 3D space as I want to, to sort of construct this little home. And, all right, so now I sort of more or less have the structure of my roof, and I can actually sort of go inside, and I can look around, you know, I sort of have my little house, maybe I want to, you know, actually fill my roof in. Um, but you guys kind of get the idea, you, you can really navigate space and just a much, much more intuitive way, you know, so I can go through and sit up, put down to the ground. So, okay, so that is, is kind of one example of a very basic capability uh, of the device. Um, so another thing that you can start doing when you have a device like this is, is you can actually sort of put objects into the world. So here, what I'm going to do, uh, this was made by a company called Envive. Um, and they wanted to, uh, I guess, visualize a car. Um, this car is to scale, so the stage isn't super big. So I think I'm just going to shrink it down for the purposes of this demo. Um, but you can see that the car is, is sort of tied into the world in sort of a, in an augmented reality view. Um, and the thing that's, that's kind of cool about Tango is that we can do this without any markers. Like, we've just sort of put a car in the environment, I can look away, I can look back, um, and I can start to, you know, really sort of change, I guess, the car. Uh, I can decide to give it a body upgrade. Maybe we, uh, maybe we give it a sunroof. So there's a sunroof. And, you know, I can kind of go all the way around it. Uh, I can sort of look inside under the hood and kind of get into the engine. It's just like a very, I guess, intuitive way to explore an object. Um, I can even sort of go inside. A, maybe I made the car a little too small. <laughs> um, but so, you know, we think this kind of augmented reality is also very powerful, and I've actually been working with the folks here at SKT to uh, explore this modality for the Tango device uh, more heavily. So that's that's been a fun collaboration for us. Um, 
I also mentioned that the tango has the ability to, to sort of perceive space in 3D. Um, and so when you uh, have the ability to see space in 3D, um, it also allows you to, to do some more sort of intuitive things. So if I kind of place a point in the world, let me maybe pick something that's a little bit more interesting. So here you can see I can measure the podium, um, but maybe I want to measure something a little bit more difficult. So I measure up to the ceiling. Um, and I can also you know, measure and then sort of walk. Maybe I want to measure from one podium to the other. And you can see that you know, I actually have in AR a view of sort of where I traveled in space. Um, this, this seems simple, but there's a lot that you can build on top of this. You know, you could envision replacing your washer like I talked about, or placing furniture in your home, or figuring how much paint you need to paint your walls. There's just a lot that you get from actually understanding your environment uh, in this kind of detail. Um, so to take that one step further, uh, what we've also done, um, and this is kind of early work that we hope to improve, um, we also have the ability to, to sort of reconstruct the environments in a more, uh, I guess, full-featured way. Maybe the flowers are, are sort of an interesting thing to look at if I kind of get there. Let's sort of get that. So if I pause this and go from the top, you can see that I have kind of a model of the stage, and actually that I... I can see myself as I, as I sort of walk on the stage. Um, and so here, uh, you could envision creating you know, a procedurally generated game um, or any, any kind of application that actually takes the full geometry of the scene into account. Um, one like, little example, this is, this is like a very toy example of this. Um, second. So here, you know, I'm, I'm sort of doing the same thing, uh, but I can, I can shoot balls that, that actually sort of bounce off of the surface that I create. So this is just a very, let's see if I can maybe, yeah, cool, landed. Uh, so, so this is just sort of a very simple example of the kind of application or, or gameplay that you could see that, you know, like normally you wouldn't be able to um, because we, we actually have sort of 3D information. Um, and I guess the last one I want to show is, is just we, we couldn't resist, so we had a little bit of fun. But one second, let me set this up. So this guy, you know, just shows like a different kind of way you could actually use your, your device. Oh, I'm not going to beat my ice floor at all. Um, but, you know, this is just kind of like a fun thing to do. So you could imagine uh, doing this in multiplayer form. That's another thing that's really cool about Tango is we can put multiple people into the same environment. And so you could play, you know, Robot Hunter uh, with your friends. Um, so. I guess this is all just to kind of illustrate that, you know, we've really only started, I think, to scratch the surface of what's possible with this kind of technology. Um, and we're really, really excited to, uh, to see where it goes. Uh, it's not a very good um, So, 